Okay girls, this is question 5 from exercise 4.4. We're asked some questions about this function here. y equals some number, we're told that some number is greater than 0, some number divided by 1 plus e to the minus 2x. Now what I've done here, just briefly, is to map what a could look like y equals a would just be a horizontal line and we're told that it's greater than zero so that would look like that no matter where it is it's always going to be divided by this thing here this 1 plus e to the minus 2x when x is greater than or equal to zero and that would be this green line here and what we're really doing is exploring the function that's created when we have this a this sum number this sum horizontal number divided by this exponential. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and we'll have a look at what this looks like in a moment. Our first question is find the value of y when x equals 0. This is fairly mechanical. We just chuck 0 in for x and we get a on 1 plus e to the minus 0 or 1 plus e to the 0 which of course is 1. We get a on 2. That's fairly straightforward. What does the value of y approach for very large values of x? This is part b. Well, what I've done here is we know that when x equals 0, we get y equals a on 2. Well, let's move away from 0. We'll just try a half. And all we're going to do is substitute some values for x into this equation and see what comes out. Just this bottom part of course. We don't know what a is but we can see what what this function approaches as we put in different values of x. So this time I'm going to try 1 plus e to the minus 2 times a half which will then of course be e to the minus 1. And we get 1.3678. So this number is now, it was when x was 0 was a on 2 is now going a on 1.3 so we can see the denominator has shrunk a bit let's try when x equals 1 so that would be a on 1 plus e to the minus 2 and we get a on 1.1353 blah 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 and we can see it's starting to shrink a little more look at that denominator going from here to here it's shrinking and we're going to try a on 1 plus e to the minus 2 times 4. So this is going to be a on 1 plus e to the minus 8. This is just playing to see what is happening when we're doing this stuff. Oh, I missed one. Uh, this will become a on 1.000335. Have a look at these. They are, as we increase the value for x, we're moving away from this a on 2. It becomes a on 1.3, a on 1.1. We are approaching a on 1.1, oh sorry, 1.0000. This denominator is getting closer and closer to 1. So as we increase the value of x, our function is getting closer to a divided by 1 which is getting closer to a. We're getting closer and closer. As we increase the values of x, we're getting closer and closer to this function a divided by 1, which is y equals a. And that then is our answer. Remember the question was, what does the value of y approach for larger values of x? It's approaching a. And we're going to have a look at that graphically in a moment. But now we get to play differentiation of this function. Now I've already done two different versions of this differentiation. Here is the original function. Now using the quotient rule, this is, let's change color here for a moment, bottom diff top. Now why did the top become zero? Because a, as we remember from the very start, a is just a number. So when you differentiate a number, it becomes zero. So bottom diff top minus top diff bottom. Yes. All on the bottom squared. And just tidying up from here, 
uh, that whole section disappears and we're left with minus a times minus 2 would be would be positive 2a e to the minus 2x now this part here it has a negative power so we can drop it underneath and this is our final answer to the differentiation of the original function this next part what's happened here okay is the y dx always positive look at our restrictions that we were given right at the start so this is part c is the y dx always positive well we were told that x is always greater than or equal to zero and a is always greater than zero so they're both positive for a start yeah okay so then if we look at this here and we substitute in just positive values for that and positive values for these parts here what happens well this will increasingly get large it will become a larger and larger number a larger and larger positive number so will this this part in here if we're putting positive values for x into here what does that become remember this negative power means it becomes 1 on e to the 2x we've got 1 plus any of those and so this is just going to become a smaller and smaller fraction as the x value increases this becomes 1 on a small and smaller number so it just becomes 1 plus something small and all of that is being squared so if we're squaring stuff that is getting closer and closer to 1 we're squaring a number that's increasingly getting closer to 1 this whole thing gets closer and closer to 1 as x increases in value and this part is getting to be a bigger and bigger number this e to the 2x as x increases and all of this all of this is dividing into this increasingly large number there's no way this can get negative none okay next alrighty what do we got here oh this is a special part this one okay this says find 2y on a, a uh, outside of a minus y this is a lot of cheeky algebra that's what it is really more than anything else it's just cheeky algebra so I've done two versions of it if this is our original function and they want us to show it in this uh, sorry to then put it into this then all I'm going to do is take this thing here and rewrite it and every time I hit y I'm going to replace it with what y is worth so this says two lots of y so I've gone two lots of this on a outside of a minus oh there it is again so I replace the y with what I know y is worth so all I've done is rewritten this thing replacing y with this now I just have to rearrange and the first thing I did was just multiply the two into there and I took this divide by a and wrote it as a times by 1 on a because I think it's easier to handle now all of that is being multiplied by this which is this part here and it looks like I haven't done anything on that line to that so then I step down to the next line Doo -doo 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 -doo. now I'm multiplying the a into here notice it goes around the front there and on this one here I'm just showing this in a slightly different form so it's easier to see I'm putting the a on one and I move to the next line this a here can cancel with this a here what's happened here is that I have cross multiplied one times a stays uh, sorry one times minus a becomes minus one a a times 1 plus e to the minus 2x becomes a outside of 1 plus e to the minus 2x 
and so they've got a common denominator now. When I multiply this section here by this section here, the 2 just multiplies by all this stuff. Oh, it can't do that yet. Sorry about that. All I'm doing for between this line and this line is I'm taking out a common factor of A. See how that and that have a common factor of A? There it is there. So then in brackets, what's left? 1 plus e to the minus 2x minus 1. And you might notice that that minus 1 and that plus 1 will kill each other off. Then I'm left with a times 2. And then this part here, e to the minus 2x. Notice how it's got a negative power. It drops to underneath e to the minus 2x. And what are we looking at? We're looking at exactly what we have from our differentiation from the previous slide. Here's our differentiation, 2a on e to the 2x outside of 1 plus e to the minus 2x all squared. By doing this rearrangement, this 2y on a outside of a minus y, if we follow that through, we get the same result. e to the minus 2x outside of 1 plus e to the minus 2x all squared. Now look, I've done it again a slightly different way by expanding that out first, the 2y on a outside of a minus y. So if you've done it that way, then I've got the same substitution method just having expanded this out first. And you can walk through that at your leisure. I'll upload a copy of this onto Moodle so you can explore it. Or pause it as you go. But as you can see it's still substituting the value for y into the original function and we again get the same result. We get that differentiation. So in this case we can say that that question, question E, 2y on A outside of A minus Y is the same as our dy dx and that's what we're meant to find. That's our statement. You see the next step is hence or otherwise find the value for Y for which dy dx is a maximum. Well, there's a y in there. Usually, to find a maximum for dy dx, we want dy dx to equal z um, sorry, we want dy dx to equal zero. Well, let's try differentiating this then. So we get the second derivative, so we can find the maximum of dy dx. So let's call this gx, just to give it a different name. Sorry, not gx, gy. Because we haven't got an x in this one, we've got a y. Let's call this one gy. If we differentiate this, what happens? All right. First, by the differentiation of the second, so 2y on a by the differentiation of the second, which would be minus 1, plus the second, a minus y, by the differentiation of the first, which would be 2 on a, remember that that a is just a number and 2 on a could be 2 on 5, 2 on 10, 2 on 3, we don't know. But if we differentiate a fraction next to a pronumeral, we end up with that fraction still there. Now I'm going to expand and tidy. So minus 2y on a plus 2a on a minus 2y on a. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay, now what? Let's keep tidying. They cancel. And I've got 2 minus 4y on a. And when we're finding a maximum, 
Oh dear. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Sorry about that. If we're finding a maximum, usually that's when the second derivative is at its maximum, oh sorry, is equal to zero. So let's make this equal to zero. 2 minus 4y on a. I'm going to take this stuff here and add negative 4y on a to both sides. So 4y on a equals 2. 4y equals 2a. Then a equals, sorry, here. y equals 2a on 4, y equals a on 2. Okay. Therefore, our maximum value for dy dx, maximum value for y, when dy dx is a maximum, is a on 2. The last part says state the maximum value of dy dx. Good gracious. Well, if dy dx is the same as if dy dx is the same as two y on a outside of a minus y, then what we want if that's f y, then we want f at our maximum a on two. Two lots of a on two on a outside of a minus a on two. All right, let's pull this part apart a little bit. That's two a on two, two a on two divided by a, which is the same as multiplying by one on a outside of a is the same as two a on two minus a on 2. Okay. This part here, those can cancel. Those can cancel, leaving 1 times 1, which is just 1. We can ignore all of that. This part in here, 2 a's minus an a is 1 a on 2. We get the same result, but this is the working to show that when the function is at its maximum, which we showed over here, when the function is at its maximum, the value of dy dx is a on 2. Look girls, this may have been a fairly confusing question, but I want to drag it back to something. This is about a relationship between some value of a, here it is here, that orange line, some value of a, that orange line, that was being divided by that green line, that 1 plus a, sorry, sorry, that a on 1 plus e to the minus 2x. See this black line here? This black line is what happens when you divide this a value by this exponent. And if we shift that around, we can see graphically you can see graphically how that black line gets closer and closer to A. And that's why our maximum is always going to approach A. But our maximum derivative is this point in here. That's where our derivative is going to be at its biggest. So let's put it on 4. a on 2 is 2, there's our y function, is the largest value of, of the derivative is 2 at that point. Okay, look, uh, you may have some questions about this and I'm happy to field them, but uh, that's uh, all I've got time for today. I hope that helped.